butterfly in the sky. I can go twice. All right, ladies and gentlemen, today we're actually going to delete my battle parties in Ultra League and attempt to do auto wreck. So I did an auto wreck video on my YouTube channel recently, and I had someone comment about how Rise to the Occasion does his auto wreck. Essentially, he says whenever they get recommended a team, they can switch out one Pokemon of the same type and also switch the lead. So I thought that maybe we could do Rise to the Occasion's rule set for auto wreck today. I'm gonna head over and delete my only battle party I have in Ultra League. Bye bye. Now, I'm gonna spend time between each match and show you what the game recommended me and then what I switched out with these new rolls in place. All right, so in this very first match, we ended up getting recommended our Blaziken with Fire Spin that is not built for PvP. So we have Latias and Swamper, and I decided, you know what? How about we try switching out this Blaziken? or another fire type and I decided to run my Dragon Breath Charizard and do some pseudo ABB line with Dragon Breath and uh, yeah this is the first battle. Alright so we're leading the Swampert which we didn't change the lead for this one we just switched out Blaziken for Charizard and we do get a Clefable lead so this is kind of a tough one we do have some ways to deal with it with Charizard but we are running Dragon Breath and I decided it's probably better to try to like stay in scare them make them think maybe we're running Sludge Wave and we do end up getting one shield and we're gonna end up throwing in Charizard and it does end up scaring out the Clefable so they bring in Whalerin and this isn't horrible for us we're gonna shield the Ice Cold Sphere because I think what I do here I just decide I need to shield at least one of them and get to the blast burn here. And I'm pretty sure they had the Ice Skull Sphere here. I don't know if they just thought they could farm me there. But um, in comes the Clefable. I'm gonna insta swap here to my Swamper, knowing that Charizard is just gonna feed and we're not gonna be able to do anything. So fortunately, I am at enough HP with Swamper here to be able to Hydro Cannon the Clefable away, and then we end up having this Registeel in the back. And it's kind of crazy because they're actually going to try to farm me down here. And I connect the Earthquake and then I just get another move off and knock them out. So I get what they were trying to do here, but um, yeah, I guess we probably still had a pretty nice scenario even with having Latios in the back. A little unfortunate we didn't get a chance to run that, but I did actually run that a lot during the stream when I did the auto wreck so okay anyways in this next battle let's take a look at what the game recommended me so originally recommended me a lone muck in the lead with drapion the second slot and a slow king in the back line so i think what i ended up doing here was i switch out the slow king i put in melodic and i move melodic to the lead and then i kind of have like this weird pseudo abb team with melodic and then double dark poison that's our next battle here let's jump into it all right, so we get an Obstagoon lead, probably our best case scenario for this, and they end up bringing in Cresselia right away. So I decide, hey, let's bring in our Alolan Muck. This is a Poison Jab Muck with Acid Spray. So the very first move, I'm just gonna throw Dark Pulse. I didn't really feel like it would have made sense to bait here this early. I mean, I guess I could have and just tried to get off a lot of damage, but I think that's better because we can get a nice chunk away. And the Moonblast will actually hurt us over time. So we don't really want to take more than one of those if we can avoid it. So here I'm going to probably commit one shield just so I can farm down and win the switch. And this will be good for us because we can actually throw the Acid Spray off on Obstagoon, which will allow us to lower its defense and come in safely with our Melodic. And obviously the Obstagoon doesn't really want to stay in here. So they're going to instantly switch to their Gengar, and I cannot believe that we just kind of, our backline does really well against theirs. So we bring in the Drapion, and I didn't think it was Focus Blast, but um, yeah, the Shadow Ball, we can take that. Fortunately, it is the Shadow Punch Shadow Ball. I assume it's Shadow Punch Shadow Ball. But um, yeah, they end up just not shielding Gengar whatsoever, and at this point, I had a feeling they would throw Night Slash, and I knew that we could live the Night Slash, and go for an aqua uh, tell and that's nice because we can get one shield and we're really close to the surf here on melodic 
So the biggest thing here for us is if the Obstagoon by chance gets a boost, we are it's going to become a lot more difficult for us to win this match. But fortunately, um, we take that first Night Slash, they do not get a boost, and we will safely be able to get to the second Surf and secure the win. Yeah, I didn't even shield. I mean, I guess I should have at least shielded one, but I guess I was thinking if by chance... I don't know. I guess it didn't really matter. They couldn't have farmed me at that point. I really enjoy doing these auto wreck battles, by the way. I've had so much fun. I feel like they're very entertaining. Like, if you come to my Twitch stream when I'm doing them, I'm blown away at times by some of these matches I'm actually able to pull off. But anyways, let me jump into our next battle here. This next one, I don't even change the team, so I get a Grand Bull lead that has Snarl, by the way. And I have my Hundo level 50 Altaria and Kingdra recommended to me. And I just thought, hey, this already lined up kind of like an ABB line. Let's just keep it and see what happens. You know, it's always fun to give this Altaria a chance in the open Ultra League. So, yeah. Fortunately for us, this is actually kind of decent because if we were Charm, this could have been pretty tragic for us. But interesting enough, us having Snarl is pretty decent here. We are able to connect our first crunch. Got a little nervous and I switch out to Altaria. I didn't catch a move at all. And they end up bringing in their Giratina. So this is kind of an interesting situation. I'm just not going to shield the very first Dragon Claw, but then I'm going to go straight Moonblast. And I think this here is actually a very game changing moment because we do end up securing an attack drop, which does allow us to kind of tank the moves in Dragon Breath a lot. Oh, this is actually a Shadow Claw um, Giratina, by the way. If it was Dragon Breath, we probably would have been in a tougher position, but because it is Shadow Claw, we're not really afraid of the farm down. So we are able to get a sky attack and they decide just to let Giratina go. And in comes the Venusaur. And the thing about the Venusaur is it will have to throw a move here. And yes, that's pretty much what it does under taps. And here I'm going to just bring in the Grand Bull. And a part of me was thinking, Oh, they're definitely going to bait here with a Frenzy to get my shield. And they made a great call and just went Sludge Bomb. So now I'm in a pickle where I have to get very lucky on this last matchup. Like, we have to have a nice matchup, and we have to, like, get lucky with getting the bait. So it is a Swampert. And I'm telling myself in my chat, like, they have to shield this, and I have to get an attack drop. And that's pretty much what goes on here. I... Genuinely feel like they couldn't double Earthquake here, but they did throw Hydro Cannon, which I don't know why they did that. Oh, wait, they're Sludge Wave, that's right. So, yeah, that's just game, yo. I'm going to be able to connect to this Outrage, and yeah, that was a insane battle. Okay, so this next battle, we got Recommended Bomba Snow Moltres, which is not meant for battle. I mean, I do have an ult. I'm pretty sure I do have an Ultra League Moltres, but this one was, you know, it's just someone, it's just one I caught randomly, and then Crustle. But what I end up putting, I just flip out Moltres in the mid for Talonflame. I don't realign this at all. So, yeah, let's see how this match goes for us. Some of these teams are just wild also. We get really lucky with the Trevenant lead, then in comes the Cresselia. So this is kind of an interesting situation because, you know, because I'm like flipping through so many different team comps, I wasn't really thinking at the time like, yo, I could just bring in Talonflame here. Because unless it has Future Sight, I can pretty much rack up a lot of damage here and do really good. But Crustle is not terrible here either. It's just, you know, it just hit me after the fact. Like, because I was thinking, oh, Bug beats Psychic. But they end up do having Future Sight. So maybe in a way, this isn't the worst. I mean, I guess I was thinking Talonflame and Obama Snow can both beat Trevenant pretty safely. So I don't necessarily need to worry about it. You know, I thought maybe Crustle can just, you know, that's my thought process, I suppose. But maybe it could have just been better to rack up. Because. Even in here, like if you think about it, like if I brought in Talonflame on the Cresselia, it would have been pretty beefed up against this Welrin, and Crustle does a pretty decent job. It doesn't, I think Welrin can do a better job at being Crustle than Lapras could. But yeah, regardless, um, we had our Bomb of Snow, so I felt like maybe we were okay. But yeah, this whole match, I'm just going to kind of like, at this point, we definitely need to shield and throw our move and again this is kind of interesting i think i just 
I think I double shield this, actually. Um, wait, yeah, I do. Yeah, because we can actually farm down at that point, and yeah, Trevenant was gonna get melted. Oh, by the way, if you're watching this and you've made it this far, you must enjoy content like this. You should totally consider liking, commenting, subscribing, because that really does help my content reach a wider audience here on YouTube. I really appreciate it, and it's free. So, and you're always more than welcome later down the line to unsubscribe. But yeah, let me show you our last battle here. This one was just kind of like all over the place. The only battle ready Pokemon was Greedent, and that was in our third slot. We had a Dialga lead, a uh, Slow King. The Slow King does have, I think it was Psychic and Confusion, so it's not terrible to get. And even though it's only 2345 CP, I just feel like it doesn't even really matter <laughs> at times. But what I end up doing here is I decided to switch out Dialga for Dragonite, and I switch Greedent to the lead. But yeah, let's uh, get into it. So we're leading Greedent here, like I said, and we end up being a Lapras lead. So in a way, like probably our best case scenario, I mean, I guess Slow King could have been all right here, but I think Greedent makes a nice matchup. So I'm going to throw Crunch first in hopes of getting a defense drop, and that actually is what happens. So these body slams will start racking up a lot faster. I'm going to throw my first body slam here, and they're not going to shield, they're just going to let these slip on through, which makes sense. But now, they're going to be in a position where this and a little bit of farm down will be lethal, so they're just going to let it go through, I don't blame them. But I think they throw Ice Beam here, but that won't kill me. So I'm not going to shield, I'm just going to keep it so we win the lead. They bring in Swampert here. So, I'm just, I have a lot of energy. I have body slam stored up so i decide you know what i really don't want to switch out here this is not terrible for us like dragonite has a pretty good matchup against Humpert and same with slow king so i'm just going to try to go up as much damage here as possible and now i'm just going to go straight for a farm down on swampert i'm not even going to shield like even if it's a sludge wave and it ends up being hydro we get the farm down uh very safely and in comes the giratina so the interesting thing about this whole situation is we pretty much just I don't know why they didn't shield that honestly like them not shielding that is huge but we we made a great call too and we caught the dragon claw I genuinely genuinely feel like them not shielding that dragon claw was a big mistake because now it's just like a farm down match I mean look how much damage if we even just get off with our slow king like we can eat I was pretty much using slow king as like a third shield and residual damage so yeah that was a set for my stream yeah i had a lot of fun doing it i mean we had some decent sets we had some four ones we had one that was like we had i think our worst set was actually like a one four just wanted to try out a different format did you enjoy this format did you enjoy seeing the before and after do you enjoy the role set for this auto rec challenge i mean you know i try my best to showcase losses and wins but when you get a 5-0 with Otterick, I mean, that in itself is just, like, kind of funny. It makes you wonder, how did this happen? But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, the Sasquatch getting stronger each and every day. Have a good morning, evening, afternoon, we're tuning in. I'll catch you in the next one.